Welcome back. This is the third video in the libgdx tutorial series I've been putting together. And in the last video, we were working on animations. So now we're going to look at player movement, which can be a little tricky in libgdx and 3D, uh, but also a very common thing for, uh, for video games. So what we're going to try to do is get this slime to move around, and we'll probably make some adjustments to the camera, as right now, the camera is in a first-person kind of free-floating mode, which isn't really going to work when we start moving the character around and, and trying to follow him. So let's get started. We're going to start by adding some new variables for player movement. And so we're going to need a speed for the player. A separate speed for rotation. And then we're going to need a couple other variables here. Uh, one's going to be a matrix 4. And this is for our player transform, which we're going to be modifying, as we'll see later. So this just allows us to, to manipulate it manually and then reapply it back to the player. I'm also going to have a couple vector 3s here. First one is going to be our move translation. And we'll see how we use that in a bit. And then we also have another Vector3 for tracking our, the, the, the slime or the player's uh, current position. And uh, so next we'll go down and let's go down to our render loop and see what we, what we have going on here. Um, well, of course we're going to have to do some input processing. So we can start with that and we'll just kind of work through this and see what happens. So let's create a new method for processing the input. And we're going to need the uh, delta time. And then, uh, so let's see here. I guess the first step we would want to do is um, let's update the player transform that we have, that matrix. And uh, to do that, we'll call our player transform. And we should be able to call set and pass in a matrix and so we're going to of course use the uh, the slimes transform and let's go ahead I'm going to go ahead and refactor this now this scene that has our slime in it and let's just call this the player scenes for now a little easier to read okay so yes back to our input so what we're going to do is we're going to set our local player transform to the uh, current transform of the actual model. And then we'll, as we'll see, we'll, we'll make changes to that transform and then we'll apply it back to the model once we're done. So let's go ahead and get some inputs here. And we're going to do is key pressed and then we'll just real time make some updates if that key is pressed. So let's start with uh, the all too common uh, W key for moving forward. And so we have that move translation vector and that's what we're going to modify here. So Z is going to be forward and we're going to add the speed to this vector times our delta time so we get some smooth movement. And let's just start you know, let's just see if we get some movement with this. It's going to, I think it's going to go crazy, but let's just make sure that he's moving around. And he is. So if we rotate the camera, it's all crazy, but we can see he's, uh, he's moving around. Let's go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and finish this out. So let's get our backwards movement in here. So to do that, we can just uh, minus equals the speed instead. And then let's get um, some rotations. So we'll use A. And now we're going to have to change our logic up here. Instead, we're going to modify the transform by rotating it. And we're going to rotate it on the Y axis, which is the uh, up axis in the BDX in 3D. So what we're saying here is rotate it on the y-axis, and then we need to tell it by how much. 
So we're going to bring in our rotation speed. And you guessed it. Times it by the delta time. And then we'll do the same for... For our D key. Except the difference is going to be... Negating it. We're putting a minus in there. So we'll get the opposite rotation. Okay, so this... Our manipulations are, are happening here. We're making changes to our move translation vector and this player transform. And now we need to go and actually apply this back to the player. But there's a couple uh, couple steps still. So what we want to do is now apply the move translation to the transform. So we rotated the transform. Now we're going to apply this movement translation to it. By calling translate and passing in our move translation vector. Okay, so now here we go. We're going to set this modified player transform back to our slime model. So we'll say um, set the modified transform. And let's get the, I think, what do we call it? Player scene. Model instance transform and set so now we're setting this player transform back that we've made changes to and then uh what do we what do we want to do next so that's right we have our current position and we're going to need that later so let's go ahead and and update our current position vector uh, now that we've applied the changes so we'll go player scene model instance we're going to access that transform. Get translation will give us the vector 3 position of the slime. And then there's one last step. Uh, we're going to clear the move translation out. Uh, for the next frame to manipulate. And I'm going to go ahead and let's, let's start it up again and see what we have now. Uh, Okay, so we've got forward, backwards, and we've got some movement. Um, but the camera, the camera is actually moving with the model because we still have the first person camera. So we don't see him rotating. In fact, we get a kind of strange, a strange effect going on. Let's go ahead and just uh, find our camera controller here. That first person camera controller. I think we'll go ahead. Let's let's uh, turn it off for now. And by that, I'm just gonna let's see. I think we can just comment it out. And hey, we are rotating. We're moving. It's very slow, but we've got something happening here. And I think we might leave the camera controller there for now in the code, but we'll leave it commented out because we might want that later. And uh, let's let's take a look at the camera position now and. Because the camera's not moving, it's just looking at the model. It's it's kind of confusing. And of course, there's nothing in the scene right now, so it doesn't help with no other points of reference to see the movement happening. So we'll take a look at that as well. In fact, maybe maybe we'll start with that. Let's get some other objects in the scene just so we can use those as a point of reference. And we'll just uh let's do uh, uh some build some boxes, something. Something pretty straightforward. All right, so we're going to use the model builder. And we'll call begin on that. And we're going to do a loop because we're going to just create a bunch of boxes. So for X. And then we'll also do Y values. Okay, so now I'm going to make another change here. If we'll want to kind of stagger them out or move the, you know, we don't want all the boxes on top, like bunched up together. So we'll increment the X and Y coordinates by 10 each time, just to give some separation. And let's go ahead and make a, a material for these boxes. And 
And I want to set a color on here. So we'll uh, on the material set. We'll use the since we're using the um, GXD or we're using the G, uh, GLTF. We'll use the PBR color attribute. And I think it's create yes create base color factor. Let's just do a simple color for now on this material. So next we're going to go into the mesh art builder and start building our boxes. First, we have to instantiate this. Uh, for the for the uh, part, it's not really a big deal, but I'll go ahead and just name it based on its location. And oh, so yeah, actually, uh, you know, libgdx, it's x and z coordinates. I let me go ahead and fix that here. It's not a big deal, but Let's change this Y to a Z. So we have our primitive type. And we want triangles. And we have uh, some vertex attributes here. And I'm actually using uh, some sample code as a reference because I, you know, you're remembering this stuff offhand. I, I usually can't do that either. But we're going to we're going to have a couple things. So we're going to have a uh, position attribute. Maybe. Ah, oh, yes, vertex, uh, vertex attributes. And there's our position. And we'll also do a normal and pass in the material. And then, so our last part is um, we're going to use the box shape builder. Of course, now this is not the most efficient way. Uh, to if you wanted to render a bunch of boxes or anything like that, these are simply for giving us a point of reference. Okay, so we'll call build. We have to pass in the mesh uh, the mesh part builder, and then we should be able to provide some yep x y and z coordinates. Uh, we'll keep it at zero height, and we'll just make the boxes. Um, one for with height and depth. And so what we're going to end up with here is with a model that has many um, mesh parts in it. So let's go ahead and make a new model instance based on the result of our model builder. And then lastly, we're going to add this to our uh, scene manager. Okay, I think that's all we need to get some boxes in the scene. Let's let's test it out. All right. Yep. I can't move the camera around anymore, but I see there's a box and I'm going to trust that there's some <laughs> more boxes uh, visible off screen here. And I think I realized on my rotation so slow, I actually want to let's add a zero here, make it 80 and not eight. All right. So we have the let's just check that rotation one more time. That's that's much better. So now, hey, we, we've got him moving around, but when he goes off the screen, you know, can't see him anymore. So how can we uh, how can we get the camera to follow him? So we're going to implement some really kind of basic changes to the camera here so that it's that he's always in view. And we'll start with um, a couple values at the top here. Uh, let's let's first just see what it looks like from a just directly above head. Let's see if we can do that. And we'll put it, we'll use 20 as our height value. And so let's find, um, actually, yeah, there's something else I'll show you, but let's just go ahead and get the height going first. And we're going to see some glitching. Uh, I want to show you that first and then kind of uh, show you the fix for that. But for now, we'll set the camera at, a, at, a, at the height that we have, um, the height that we set up cam height when we initialize the camera and then also in our render loop after we process input and update so we've updated the slimes position 
let's go ahead and also uh, update the camera's position to align with the, mo the change of the slime. So we're going to set a new position on the camera, and if you remember, that's what we're going to use that current position vector for that we're setting after we move the player. So we'll, we'll set it to the, we'll of course use the, the X and Z positions of the slime, but we're going to use cam height for the for our Y position. So we'll have a fixed height. But the camera will follow the slime around. And since we commented out the camera controller, we will need to update the camera manually. And one last piece here, I'm going to have the camera look at the uh, current the current position. So it's going to look at where the slime is. So the camera will be above the slime, directly above it, looking down at him. And there we go. Okay, so this is this is looking really good. We've got our boxes, we're moving around. You can see there's some kind of strange artifacts going on here with the slime. Some glitching, you might be able to see that. And uh, this has to do with the depth buffer. And so what we're going to do is, I think the default value when we started is just, it's far too low. And you have this cam camera near and far plane. So we're taking this value and then dividing it even further. And it, the further precision of the depth buffer, it's too too far. So the generally with, a, with the depth buffer with OpenGL, the near position, you want it to be as large as possible as you can get away with. And the far distance, as small as possible as you can get away with, so that um, you won't end up with this Z fighting that's happening. So we're just going to use one for our near distance. That should clear up the issue, and it looks like it did. There's no more Z fighting visible. And let's go ahead and do one more change. So we're directly above the player. Uh, we'll go ahead and make a little pitch change to the camera, just so we can see a little more of the world. So I think we'll we'll add a new value here. And pitch. And set it to negative 20. And then, so we're going to apply that uh, when we're updating the camera's position. Uh, and we'll do it, on, we'll, let's try it on the, the Z axis. Or not the Z axis, but the Z position. So it's going to move us uh, away a little bit. There we go. All right. So now we have some player movements going on and everything's looking good. Um, next, I would uh, hopefully uh, in the next tutorial, we can do some, maybe we'll work on the camera a little bit more. Right now, it's as you can see, it's fixed and it doesn't follow rotations, but that's something uh, we can look at in the, in the next tutorial. All right, thanks.